Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Podcast? Are you okay? I'm just trying to get through technology. Are you going to sit by me? I'm not high. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure. So you're not like positive? Mm. I'm high on heat. Yeah, it's pretty hot out here. Can you sit next to me? I'm sitting right here. Oh, okay. I like sitting right here. Because I want to swivel. And if I swivel too far, I might kick you. You're in a swiveling chair. Yes. That swivels. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of warm in Albuquerque. Yeah. But, uh, oh, what's going on? I don't know. Oh, that's okay. It's yeah. your phone. <laughs> but we are enjoying a nice, cool, refreshing Bosky Brewing Company Elephants on Parade Fruited Wheat Ale. It's fruity, it's hazy, it's Elephantastic. Elephantastic. Once again, they do not pay us to say that. Here's um, what's interesting. <laughs> Brewed and canned by Bosky Brewing Company, Denver, Colorado. Wow. You know, we could dog on Colorado right now, but we're going to refrain from doing so. I don't so. understand why it says that. Maybe they just get their packaging from are Denver. They, are they from Denver? No. Nah. I don't think so. I need to ask them. <laughs> right this minute? Not this minute, but I thought they were like... Us, but on their on their can it says brewed and canned by Bosky Brewing Company, Denver, Colorado. You sound severely disappointed. Well, you know. Now you have that like hometown loyalty when it comes to beer, and then you, you know, get it shattered by a little thing on a can, and all of a sudden you don't know who you are anymore. You're waking up in gutters. <laughs> yeah. You don't even remember your name. Yep. You're missing a finger. Maybe. Has that ever happened to you? Mm. You don't know. <laughs> Denver, I don't know. Do you have Colorado. all your fingers? <laughs> but it's good beer. It is good. It's refreshing. Um, it's a summer beer for sure. They're opening up a new location um, where the old jackalope is. In Bernalillo. In Bernalillo. Bernalillo. <laughs> Bernalillo. Bernalillo. Uh. Bernalillo. How many ways can we say this without making it right? How many different ways can you say Bernalillo? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but it's pretty tasty. It it's is. good, refreshing. Um, but I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think we should complain about the heat. Just saying. Uh-uh. Uh, there goes that guy again. We live uh, next door temporarily to a uh, NASA race car. Not NASA. NASA. Uh, NASCAR. And he races to the moon every day. <laughs> every day he takes his rocket. Jeez. It's like always during nap time. It's every day. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I like how we leave Bel Air where there's sirens and airplanes and we come to the heights um, the heights where there's just like douchebags on motorcycles that's not a motorcycle it's a mustang is it mm-hmm. well, with a exhaust a douchebag nonetheless i wouldn't be quick to call them names but you don't know him <laughs> just kidding, i like how your, argu- <laughs> how your arguments like flipped you don't know him he probably is you don't know him he probably is a douchebag yeah. So, Don't assume he's not. Yeah. Well, I was on the Facebook uh, for a little bit, a little, you know, a little while ago, because uh, our daughter's Lick napping. Facebook. Our daughter's napping, so I went on the Facebook, and um, there was a post from one of your childhood friends, your parents' friends, I guess, Scott, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, lives in Phoenix, and he likes to post pictures of the weather, which I think is cool, because I like the weather. Um, Fun fact, Lorenzo likes the weather. I like the weather. But he was like, he posted the 10-day forecast or 5-day forecast for Phoenix. And it was like on Wednesday or Thursday, they have a high of 114, a low of 96. Wow, you guys get your sweaters out. It's going to be a cold one. A low of 96. And I was looking at our forecast because I'm like complaining because it's really hot here. And it was like 95 lows in the high 60s. I was like, hmm, I don't have it so bad. Nah, not so bad at all. It's not so bad here. So yesterday, despite our lack of rain, I found a giant um, wolf spider. Do they like the rain? No, I think the rain kills the eggs. Like if it's really moist outside, they they don't survive for very long. Like the season's really short. Hmm. Um, That thing was huge. I like put a cup on top of it and I was like, okay, I'm going to suffocate this thing. No. I was like, I'm going to watch you die. And it no. didn't work out. Uh, Finally, my dad ended up just stepping on him. And fun it was fact. Gross. Spiders and insects breathe by diffusion. They don't have lungs. 
So again, basically, there's a um, there's a high concentration of oxygen. It tends to go to where there's a low concentration of oxygen. So they have these like little tubes, little breathing tubes. Science, why are you always baffling me? <laughs> Just when I think I figured it out. So also another fun fact: back mm, I don't know how many millions of years ago, but a while back. The Just a bit. the uh, there was a lot of plants, lots and lots of plants, which means there was a lot more oxygen, and because there was more oxygen in the air, that means in oxygen, oxygen, <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> My wife likes to make fun of me. I feel like this First, is the new, the new drinking game. Like every time I make fun of the way you say something, <laughs> somebody can take a shot. Yeah. If y'all are drinking. First, it's young, and now it's oxygen. Young oxygen. <laughs> That sounds like Young the Giant, but not as cool. Yeah. <clears throat> like they were trying and they didn't get signed to mm -hmm. the major record label. I kind of like that band, actually. Young Oxygen? No, They're Young the Giant. Just took kidding. me a while. They grew on me, though. Um, but back in the day, because the, uh, the atmosphere was so oxygen-rich, the insects grew bigger. I so hate there that. were there were, like, millipedes that were, like, three, nope. me three meters long. Nope. Dragonflies. No, thank you. Dragonflies had no, like sorry, Bob. No. a meter mm -mm. wingspan. Like, Negative. No. Or two meters. Maybe three meters. Nope. I don't know. I don't like <laughs> nope. that at all. Nope. Nope. I reject that. Nope. <laughs> Therefore, it is not true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> if you reject something hard enough, it makes it not true. Yeah. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers to, to science. Mm. Thank you. Good grief. Don't do that. We lack sound effects in our podcast. Yeah, sometimes we don't need them. Mm. Actually, I don't think we lack sound effects. We have kids. <laughs> mm hmm That's true. Mm-hmm. That is Which, true. And pigeons. Doves. It's funny because they haven't been on a podcast with us in a while. They really haven't. I, we've been less interrupted now that we're staying at my parents' house, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I feel like I've gotten more sleep. I, I got a really good night's sleep last night. Mm -hmm. Like, really good. Did you? Like, probably top ten. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like, I woke up and I was like, I feel It's probably awesome. the virtual reality sessions you've been having. Oh, my gosh. It's like therapy. Well, <laughs> the first one was like, okay, so we busted out the VR goggles. Shout out VR. What are the goggles called? They're called Daydream. Daydream, that's right. Um, we got them when we got our phones, I believe. November. Yeah. When we got our phones, there was a deal that if you bought a Google Pixel 2 XL, or any Google Pixel, you would get a free Daydream. So we did. So we got a free daydream. So Lorenz and I were taking turns. Like, we had it casting to the TV. So, like, one of us would wear the goggles, and the other one would, like, be able to see on the TV, like, what the other person was seeing in virtual reality. It was kind of mm -hmm. cool. Um, I did one of, like, Running with the Bulls and Pamplona Spain, which was really awesome. Was it cool? It was super cool. It was crazy to watch in virtual reality. Hmm. Um, I highly suggest it. I think it was a National Geographic, like, mini CNN. Dog. CNN, you're right. Yeah. Um, and then I, I watched one where I got to pretend to be a T-Rex. Nice. And see how big I was compared to things around the world. Yeah. And that was Nito Burrito. I thought it was kind of funny because I was thinking in my head how funny it sounds. And I'm like, honey, where's my virtual reality goggles? <laughs> Sweetheart, I need my goggles. <laughs> I need to go through the virtual reality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in 2018, it's a, it's a thing. Yeah, I mean, and it's super nerdy. Like, I think we're going to look back on these VR goggles, like, in 20 years and be like, what were we thinking? They're yeah. so dumb looking. It's kind of funny. The Netflix app um, is just Netflix, but you're in a living room of this. And you can... Oh, and the Hulu app is cool, too, because you can pick... Um, you can be in, like, a mountain town or, like, at a beach resort or... Oh, I haven't seen that. Um, but there's just a big screen in front of you. So it's like you're watching TV. In you're your watching house. a huge screen, and then as the show is going, you can turn your head to the left or to the right, and you're in a place. Hmm. I feel like that's some Inception type stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, I wish there was like a virtual fridge so I could go get a virtual snack if I wanted one. Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll have the uh, virtual taquitos. Just kidding. Mm. I hate taquitos. The uh, is it called the replicator on the Enterprise? That yes. That, uh, hmm. Or the holodeck. That's no, like virtual the, reality just The holodeck you. is, yeah, it's like virtual reality that you can interact with, which... I uh, bet you scientists are figuring mm. that out. I mean, come on. Why would you not? That would be a hard one like, to do. But, but why, okay, you're going to You have to create... have molecules and atoms that you can, like, 
interact with and I don't know if that can happen no I'm saying like maybe it's not that complex maybe it's something in your brain like they they do something to your brain where your brain actually is like the your sense your all of your senses are being activated yeah hmm where it's actually it's not like in the enterprise where something is there it's, but it's like in your head because everything yeah. is about what's in our head anyway well it would just be a chemical sensation of a smell a sight a sound or a touch that'd be the a hardest touch. But I think it's doable. Yeah. I mean, we can clone animals. And some people think we can clone humans. We've gone through this. But, mm -hmm. I mean, would it really be that hard to, to think that we could, like, have, like, a real holodeck? Probably not. I think yeah. it's probably something that's already happened. I bet you all these assholes at, like, Sandia National Labs and, like, Los Alamos are, like, that's, like, one of the perks of working there. They're, like... Why are the a-holes? I don't know. Because I'm jealous. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's, like... There's, like, their break room, but their break room is just, like, a holodeck, and they're, like, your top security clearance says you can't talk about this. But have fun. But have fun in the holodeck. Have fun in 1850s San Francisco. Like, I'm gonna take my lunch break probably in, uh, you know, like, Colonial America today. So I'm gonna, I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna go sign the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. real fast. I'll be right back. <laughs> Like, I bet you. And I bet you they can't even talk about it. James, if that's true, let's have, like, a, let's have a, a top secret meeting. Nobody knows who James is. I know. Um, that's why it's top secret. That's his code name. James knows who James is. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> I just um, spilled beer down my chin. Oh, okay. This is beer number one, too. Mind yeah. You. you know, it's funny. It's so hot and I'm so thirsty. I'm drinking this beer like it's water. It's, like, yeah. that refreshing. Well, you know, sailors on ships had to just drink liquor I to come survive. from a long line of Vikings, sir. Mm -hmm. It's probably in my blood. You never know. Mm -hmm. Um, so... So. 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 Um, <laughs> I think my favorite holodeck thing was when they went to, like, it was like 1880 San Francisco, 1870 San Francisco. And, uh, I think... Lieutenant Commander Data and um, Captain Picard got stranded, I huh. believe. Somehow they were stranded. I think there was somebody in the holodeck that was like some aliens that were like Resting with sabotaging. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And they they, they get out. Yeah, and they met uh, they met Samuel Clement. Clemens. Clemens. Tom Sawyer. I mean, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Mark Twain. Mark Twain. I'm going to Hannibal in a week. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. You better get your. You better brush up on your. Better uh, get my Mark Twain stuff on point. Brush up on your. I am. On your stuff. I'm gonna go to Mark Twain Brewing Company. Ooh. Shout out. Are you excited? I'm so excited. And guys, okay, I have to share this with you because it's nerdy as hell, and I'm so excited. My brother was telling me that it's Pioneer Days. Hmm. Um, he's on the chamber for Pioneer Days. Apparently, I don't know what that means, but I know there's gonna be a parade. And I know there's going to be a float. And I said, hey, make me a costume and I will get on that float. Pause. Sure. I'll take a parenting pause real quick. All right. And then you can talk about Pioneer Days. I'm getting a costume. In a second. That's all I know. All right. I'm getting gonna, on the float. We're going to take a pause. Okay. Not that one. Back to our paranormal podcast. <laughs> There's ghosts here. Just kidding. There's I, ghosts all that around. That was very, very haunting music by Jeff Omidron. Oh, I have the mic the wrong way. Oh, man. Hold on. Sound effects? Sure. That's two beers cracking it open. Shout out to Denver's Bosky Brewing. Apparently. Mm. I also wanted to give a shout out to Brian and Gio made a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, they are wonderful. They are also local here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And they are our friends in podcasting and otherwise. So, check them out. Um, is it at Brian and Geo Made a Podcast? It's on iTunes. It is on iTunes. Brian and Geo Made a Podcast. We were laughing in the car the other day listening to it. So. Yeah, we were cracking There's up. a hashtag going around um, for people who make podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's called Potter and Family. Hashtag Potter and Family. I love it. Um, and... Uh, 
I don't know. It's kind of neat. It's like a community of podcasters. So, mm-hmm. whatever. So, I You were talking about to... your, your costume. My costume. Yeah, my... Um, I almost said my stepsister, and I have no idea why, because I don't have a stepsister, and it's my sister-in-law. <laughs> my sister-in-law, Stephanie, um, she's a very good seamstress. She's way more domesticated than I will ever be. If you want an amazing pie, she's the person that would make it for you. Um, but she also sews and makes costumes. Are you are you offering Stephanie's pie services? Well, I don't know. I mean, if the price is right, I'm sure she'd probably make you a really what awesome What did they put pie. on pies out there that we thought was weird? Cheese. Mm. But anyway... Anyway, mm-hmm. also Ryan and Stephanie, if you if you're listening to this, I might just bring you some green chili. Um, oh, how do you do that? Easy. You just bring it on the plane. Yeah, you just pack it. Hmm. Um, do I only have a carry on? I don't know. I have to look. No, you have a yeah, you have a carry on. And that's and, it. And a personal bag. Oh, well that's easy. Then I'll just bring that chili. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, no, she's gonna make me a costume. So I was looking their theme for this this um this parade they're having is party like it's 1898 or 1899 I'm sorry Hmm. and so I was like okay I'm on it and I like found all these costume ideas I was like this 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 and I was like sending her all these Pinterest ideas and I'm like please make Hmm. me a costume so I'm about to do it up in Missouri Hmm. probably Victorian era style turn of the century style wait Um, what time frame are they doing party like it's 1899 1899 okay so I'm pretty excited. It's also going to be really humid, so that'll be Mm. interesting, wearing, like, a petticoat and all that stuff, like... Hmm. And let me be honest, I'm not usually, like, this, like, gung-ho nerdy, but I love to dress up. Halloween is, like, one of my favorite And also, the only people you know out there are Ryan and Stephanie. Oh, yeah. No, I don't care what people think of me. I've said that, like, a million times. If I want to wear a costume and be in a parade, damn it, I'm going to be in a parade. Have you looked up the weather out there in Hannibal? Uh, he told me it's a little muggy. So if you look at Hannibal, uh, when are you leaving? When are you? The second, uh, August second. I will be on a plane. So mid eighties, hmm. not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Not um, too bad. No, I'm gonna check out Mark Twain Brewing. They're mm-hmm. having a release party for one of their new beers, so I'm kind of hmm. excited about that. I'm nice. gonna go check it out. Cool. Um, hang out with my brother. I'm gonna go get some coffee. Mm. Um, in downtown Hannibal. Mm. Can I just, can I say something? No. Yes. Shit. <sighs> Hannibal, Missouri, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a little tirade here because I love Hannibal. It is one of the most underappreciated cities in the United States. I'm going to say that right now. I think so. I do. You can get a Hannibal mansion from like the turn of the century for a stupid cheap amount of money. Hmm. Like it's, it's ridiculous. They're giving them away. They're giving there. them away. Um, it has the potential to be very artistic It's a very small town, but it has, like, a funky vibe. There's coffee shops. There's bookstores. So, like, a good investment would be in the Hannibal economy. Oh, yeah. Is there a gallery? Yeah. There's actually, funny story, Mm -hmm. my brother knows these people who live in Hannibal. Mm -hmm. They own a gallery slash coffee shop. Guess where they're from? Santa Fe? Taos. Ah. Yeah. But they're actually selling their house. And I was like, hmm, tempting. The folks from Taos are selling their house? Folks from Taos are selling their house. Hmm. But I feel like Hannibal has so much potential. And if you're looking for something to change and you have some money to, like, invigorate an economy, you should consider Hannibal, Missouri. It's a, it's a good spot. It's a great spot. We will never consider it, but... Well, I would. I, I speak for yourself. I would. You wouldn't. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's agree to disagree. All right. Cool. Win in Rome. Yeah. I... Okay, so I don't mind the Midwest. I I enjoy the Midwest. In fact, just, I think it's. Are great. you saying this because you're brown? Mm, no, okay. I'm extra brown this summer too, though. I'm extra brown. I am. <laughs> you went from like milk chocolate to like <laughs> to like dark chocolate. Yeah. Hey. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you're so sweet. Gonna get some fried chicken tonight. Whoa. <laughs> what? Take it easy. Let's talk about KFC. Come on. Actually, now. churches does sound super good. Ooh, Popeyes. Ooh, they have the best biscuits ever. You're right. Popeye's does. Um, and their fried chicken is pretty dang good. Mm. You know what I'm going to so, get in Missouri? Fried what? chicken. Mm. I'm going to send you all kinds of Instagram posts about it. Do it. Be like, look at this chicken. I will look at you it. You jealous? I will be. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the Midwest, so it's it's nice. It's uh, got some interesting things going on. Um, but 
the part of the country I have not been to that I would like to visit is like the Rust Belt. We were talking about that, mm -hmm. yeah. So Cleveland, Cincinnati. Does the Rust Belt Detroit? include? I don't know if it includes Detroit. Of course it does. Yeah. Um, Car manufacturing, yeah, it includes Detroit. Does it include Buffalo? I think so. New York? I want to go there. Like these early... Justin Herman, can we stay at your mom's house? I don't think he listens. I don't care if he does. His mom lives in Buffalo. Hey, Heather, your, husband, it... your I... husband's from Buffalo. Can we stay at his mom's house? I don't think Heather listens. I don't care. I don't Guys, think Justin's mom listens. We got the hookup in Buffalo. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Anybody. Anyone okay. that'll listen. All right. Fine. This is what happens when you're a mother, guys. This is motherhood. This is what happens when you have heat. No one will listen to you. Coming down on your fair skin. I am in the shade, and I have a lot of freckles to mm. cover me. Mm. Mm. I have Irish freckles. Mm. I'm probably going to jump in the pool in a minute. Mm. Okay. And um, I think we've run out of things to talk about. No, I think you're just being stubborn. Um... No, I think, you know, I just feel like there's so many communities in the United States that are waiting to be revitalized. There's so many neighborhoods that are waiting to be revitalized. Hmm. Um, case in point, we were talking about the Borellas neighborhood. Yeah. Here in New Mexico. Yeah. It's historic. It's on Route 66. Yeah. It had some bad bouts, you know, in the 90s, early 2000s with gang type stuff. But Maybe it's, now too. I mean, maybe, but I feel like it's coming back up. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wonder about Albuquerque as a whole, too. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. No, I think the thing that I just want to emphasize is, like, I feel like people need to take the time to check out their local communities, their local neighborhoods, and mm -hmm. really see, like, okay, where is my money going? Right. Like, for me, like, one thing I've done this year that is just a thing for me is, like, if I can help it, I don't go to Starbucks. I realize this is the first world conversation. I do. But, like, I don't go to Starbucks. If I can help it, I go to, like, a neighborhood coffee shop. Because I want that money to stimulate the local economy. Shout out Humble. Humble Coffee. Take a drink. Take a drink. Take a drink. Mm. Mm. Do you have to drink like that? Shout out Zen. Helix. Helix Coffee and Yoga. Cheers. They also sell my jewelry, and they're, like, the nicest people on the planet. Shout out Zendo. Mmm. They have an amazing latte. It's called the Zia Latte. It has chili in it. It is delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there's a brewery next door. Shout, Shout out, out Satellite. Sidetrack. Oh. oh. <laughs> Satellite's the OG. Satellite is the OG coffee shop in Albuquerque. But they tried to they tried to model their place after Starbucks, I think. Yeah. No, there's and, some really and good And Starbucks is already doing that. So mm -hmm. Satellite's like the local place that's trying to be like a Starbucks. And it just... They're not a Starbucks. No. So... No, there's some good spots here locally that we, you know, that we have that mm -hmm. we that we need to appreciate. Yeah, and, and I, people do, but I think the point that I'm saying is, I went to Java Joe's the other day. Mm -hmm. um, Java Joe's coffee is incredible. It's like kind of the old school coffee house here in Albuquerque. They kind of were the first ones to do it. Mm -hmm. um, still a good spot. Really good. Java food. Joe's. Yeah. Yeah. Like really Java good Joe's. food. Really good. Pastries. I'm gonna meet uh, John tomorrow. My, pr my friend John tomorrow at Java Joe's well I remember when that neighborhood was like not even like a great neighborhood and they were there and now again it's like coming up and they're doing alright you know yeah that's right by Washington Middle School mm-hmm and I think that's just downtown I don't think there's any specific name for that neighborhood but it's um it's Park hmm. it's the Park neighborhood Park Street hmm. neighborhood yeah kind of makes you wonder what makes a community thrive? What makes a com what makes a community desirable? Because I don't think Cleveland is a bad city, or Detroit really. Mm -mm. Like they have all these really cool things going on. It seems like just from the outside looking in to them, it seems like they have a lot of really cool things. But yet, people, if you look at their housing market, it's dead. Uh, you can buy houses pretty cheap. And then if you look at West Coast cities like Seattle, Portland, San Jose, Los Angeles, even further east, you go to Denver, Salt Lake City, houses are more expensive. So mm -hmm. kind of makes you wonder, like, why, why does somebody really want to go to Portland but not really Detroit 
I think that there's a lot of factors that kind of mix into that. I mean, you have the fall of the auto industry in Detroit, which affected a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But... GM is still there, though. It is. And throughout that struggle, Mm -hmm. there are still people that want to see that community thrive. So they're having to get creative and see, like, what other ways they can make it thrive. I love those travel shows. We saw one... I don't know. I don't think it, I don't think it was Bourdain. Oh, maybe, not. maybe it was somebody. I don't, maybe I mean, it was it somebody. somebody but maybe, <laughs> mm-hmm. They were in Detroit and uh, they were at this little place and like, was they, it the they, Polish place? Uh, I didn't and they know. were doing like uh, not, not bowling, but it was like, um, I know that when you're talking about, I think that one is that's actually Anthony Bourdain. I think, I think that was Cleveland or Buffalo. That was Cleveland. But there was one of those travel shows where they were in, in Detroit and the people there were like, no, like, things are pretty crazy. There's a lot of, of abandoned neighborhoods. You can buy houses, like, super cheap. Like, you can buy a pretty nice historic house for, like, I don't know, $15,000 or something <laughs> like that. Um, but there are also neighborhoods that are revitalized. And there's there's a core of people that... I mean, it's still a big city. Yeah. Detroit, at one time, had over a million people. That's crazy. But now it's it's pretty low. It's I think it's, it's like yeah. like two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand. But you know, I think the thing, the pendulum, like we were talking about before, it's starting to shift back. Like yeah. people, there was an industri- industrial pendulum for a while where it was like strong industry. That was the mm-hmm. thing. That's where the money came from. But people are going back to like urban farming, urban development, lofts, eco friendly this, mm-hmm. sustainable housing. Yeah, so things you are look changing. At, you look at that. And those places are prime for those kinds of things. Yeah. So I think they're going to see a second wave of industry, but it's going to be a very different industry than what it mm-hmm. was before. I wonder how Albuquerque fits into all of this. Like, well, it, I wonder if Albuquerque is going to be a major a major player in, you know, where people want to live, or even if it is already. I don't know. You know, the thing about Albuquerque that I've noticed, mm-hmm. and I, I know this is going to sound, it's going to come off wrong probably, but... <laughs> Let it fly. All right, well, so... Albertly, Albertly, Albertly. I was thinking of Albertsons and Albuquerque, and I don't know why. Okay, Albertly, Albertly, mm-hmm. Albertly, New Mexico, where people go to retire. Um, no, Albuquerque. Like we have been consistently poor, and I know that sounds negative, and I don't mean it that way, but I think because we have been consistently in the same economic bracket for so long. We have not been as affected by these major industrial shifts. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Like, we've been consistently poor. Like, we've been consistently the same way. And Mm -hmm. so we've been able to carry on the same way. Mm -hmm. And that may actually be to our benefit. Yeah. In a weird way. I mean, it's not like a great way to be. Nobody wants to be consistently poor. But Mm -hmm. I feel like it is to our benefit. It's like we, we have not been hit so hard that it's been devastating. So if there's somebody who has a fortune and some sort of crash helps, causes them to lose all their fortune, that that affects them more than somebody who doesn't have a fortune. If they lose a little bit, it's not a big deal for them. Right. Or they, they already know how to adapt. We don't have a ton of industries here that mm-hmm. are like so money dependent that it would completely destroy us. Yeah. And I know that's, well, I mean, we have good things and I'm not saying we don't have things that make us money, but like we have this consistency of being kind of in the same boat mm-hmm. that even if the boat gets shaken a little bit, we're going to be okay. Yeah. And, and really we can only go up from here. Right. So that's not a bad place to be. Yeah. I mean, the thing is with New Mexico and I'm, I'm always saying this, but it's true. Like you can live very well on very little here and it's only getting better. Like that's not a negative. Yeah. You know, like we have breweries, we have coffee shops, we have art, we have mm-hmm. like quirky. Well, cool I've, stuff. I've noticed a big difference from when we were shopping for a house five years ago versus mm-hmm. now. Prices have gone up. Since oh, totally. Then. So, yeah, I absolutely. Know. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, that's that's the deal. Yeah, that's the deal. We need to go to an isotopes game. Okay, that was out of nowhere. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I was thinking about local Albuquerque stuff. I was thinking about hot dogs. Of course, you were. <laughs> um, Shout out to Costco. You guys have the best hot dogs. Yeah. I'm just going to say that. Like, mm, all beef, delicious. 
I love that we can go to Costco and our kids, like, they get excited about it. Dude, They're, like, stoked. Some of the samples they had there, um, Sunday? Is that when we went? Saturday. Saturday. They no, had, Sunday. Um, it was Sunday, you're right. It was Sunday. Uh, they had, like, full sandwiches. I know. <laughs> They're like, have a sandwich. We're like, okay. And I was like, yeah, I'll take five of these for all my like, kids. I literally have a cart full of my kids and my nephew. Can we all eat lunch here right now? We basically did. They had like chicken nuggets and... You should have seen when we passed by the ice cream sample. Mm -hmm. The kids all, like, I was like trying to walk fast. I'm like, please don't look, please don't look, please don't look. And they're like, it's ice cream! And I'm like, oh my gosh. And like all you four cannot. of them were like, ah! You cannot hide ice cream from kids. <laughs> I know. They're like, it's ice cream samples. We need it. And I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess, I guess we'll go. This yeah. is a nightmare. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. So what are the good things about Albuquerque? Since I guess we're talking about Albuquerque, we'll talk about Albuquerque. Well, we lamented on Albuquerque last episode, so I now yeah. I want to lift it up. Which, by the way, um, your brother yeah. appreciated our episode. He texted me. So yeah. shout out to Ryan Freeman. We haven't yeah. shouted out him in a while. He is an author. He is a radio personality. He's he also a, a mystical Missouri nomad. I hear, I hear about that. Of grand I proportions. also heard that he's a po podcaster now. I what? saw I saw a tweet. I don't know if it's true. Bro, are you a podcaster? Let's wait for his response. <laughs> I didn't Where's hear him. Um, Where's the crickets? Well, look at that bird. Oh, I hate it. You're so ugly. Get out of here. <laughs> he's like strutting his stuff. He's I like, hate you, no, dude. No, he's, he's good. He's good. He, no, he, those birds no, eat wolf spiders. No, those you're lying. I am serious. Though that bird is like the bird of the devil. That Look bird, at it. that bird is here because that thing came straight from hell itself. That bird is here because there is food here, i.e., insects that you don't like. I don't like that bird. He is um, creepy looking. Anyway, shout out to Ryan Freeman. Oh he is an author. He's written some books. He is Lindsay's brother. He is a magnificent gentleman. Um, and a scholar. And a scholar. Hey Ryan, if you're listening to this, I just want to tell you. For the parade, I was thinking like a monocle this and is, maybe a top hat. You okay. could you could tell him this in a phone conversation. I just want to tell him now. Um, monocle, top hat, check, check. Yeah. So check bow tie? out maybe a bow tie. <laughs> check out ryanpfreeman.com dot com to get his books. Read his books. Read a book. I am reading a book right now. Don't be a dum dum. Read a book. I am reading a book right now. So I started a book this summer. By Rachel Held Evans. I call her Rachel Held. I call her Rachel Held Mick Evans because it sounds cooler. Um, but uh, do you realize that our two-year-old told my mom the other day that she wanted a Mick meal? Oh yeah. And I was like, oh dear God. Yeah. Oh, he pooped. Yeah, because he's a little piece of crap bird. Get out of here. There he goes. He pooped and left. I told you he um, wasn't a good bird. <clears throat> Rachel Held Evans. It's called Searching for Sunday. I read two thirds of it. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Well <laughs> then I, done. Sarah. And then I returned it to the library you know, because... The library is down the street. You could go get it I back. know. I probably could. We should also, get this, actually. Also, our friend uh, James told it, told me he, he would lend it to me again. Does he have it? But, yeah, he has it. Oh, okay. Well, then you should borrow um, it. It's not like I didn't want to finish it. I just... This summer has been insane. Mm -hmm. uh, in the membrane. Insane. Got insane no brain. Insane in the brain! Um, so I returned it so I can focus on trying to purchase a home and trying mm -hmm. to sell a home. Which are the most stressful we things you could ever do. We had to pause and do some adulting, basically. Yes, we is did. What you're saying. So I had to turn it back in. But Speak, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Say something really fast. Uh -huh. The girl that wrote the book, Adulting, uh -huh. I went to high school with uh -huh. in Oregon. Good. I've never heard of that book. I feel kind of. Is lame. it popular? I'm like, oh, okay. So you wrote the book on adulting, and here I am. Is it? it she did a TED talk. Is it? Is that, it? Is it tells you popular? I've never heard of this book. Apparently. Okay. So I don't know. She did a TED talk. I. I want to shout out another app called Hoopla. Mm. Um, it's a app that you can use your library card to like read stuff digitally. There's audiobooks, all kinds of really I cool love stuff. That. So I am going to read a book on my flight to New York City, which takes place this week. I'm so jealous. Um, we can be jealous of each other. I've never flown to the Columbia Airport. So, dude, you're going to New York. The last time we went to New York, do mm -hmm. you even want to talk about that? Because it was like not our best time. We still had fun though. Um. Yeah. But I would like to go back. You did know, we okay. go to the natural... Can uh, I... Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. We it's, have some of yes, our best pictures in New yes, York. Yes, we did go to the Natural History Museum. Here's mm -hmm. what I'd like to see happen. There's a blue well skeleton there. Okay, but that's not what we're mm -hmm. talking about right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to be... We're going to have been married mm -hmm. for 10 years. This coming March. Mm -hmm. 
It's on my ring in Roman numerals yes. from Etsy. We'll start a we'll, we'll start a um, GoFundMe. You guys can donate Go to ahead. our ten year anniversary. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I feel like I know we talked about Europe, but all this crap with buying a house, I feel like that's kind of been stressful. You want to go to Branson? Branson? Yeah. Dear God, no. Mm. So what were you gonna say? I would love to go to New York City with you. For our tenure? For our tenure. Maybe we should go to Detroit. That is not even close to what I'm trying to say right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to go to Detroit for my anniversary. What I would like to do is go to New York City and go to Little Italy and have a better anniversary than we did our second year of marriage hmm. in Little Italy. Hmm. Um, because that was crazy. Would you rather go to Cleveland? <laughs> Are you just trying to like swindle, no. swindle me out of like a New York trip? No, or? I think New York is great. We've both been there. We've never been to Cleveland. Lorenzo, I've been to New York one time. Ooh. Sorry, there was a bug on me. Um, Wait. Is there a daughter awake? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Um, I, I just would like to experience New York with you on a different level. Okay. Um not sleeping in a closet that our friend was renting for like $2,000. Also, I I want to go to Las Vegas again, not necessarily for my anniversary. Though. New Mexico? Oh my god. Like? I got food poisoning the first and only time I've ever been to Las Vegas, Nevada. I got food poisoning and I was throwing From in and out From in and out Burger on the Strip. So, that was not a fun time. Mm-hmm. I was puking most Which, of the time. can I say something about in and out real quick? Except for, hold on. I do want to give a shout out to Steven, the British journalist that we met in Las Vegas. Oh, and we bought pictures of PBR. They were a dollar. Well, and we went gambling at the Flamingo with him. Um, Steven, I don't know where you are. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about. My dad gave me $75 to gamble with. Mm-hmm. I bought a $75 chip. I put it on roulette. Like It was gone. It was like number 42 or something like that I don't yeah. know no, and so I was we, like oh there goes 75 bucks so we met this lovely British man his name was Stephen mm-hmm. he was wonderful um, and we were talking with him and he was a journalist and we said well who do you write for are you here for a story and he said yes and we said oh okay well so who do you write for and he said it's a very notable publication and we said well can you tell us and he said no not I can't tell you not really and we were like okay but we spent like half the night with him just hanging out gambling I don't, I don't remember that are you serious? I don't remember him not being able to tell us who he worked for. He said he wouldn't, he couldn't tell us who he worked for. Huh. But he said it was a notable publication and he was there for a story. Oh, okay. So I'd be very curious to know, Stephen, who you worked for. And if that story, you know, how was it? Watch I, it be like some, some crazy thing like Better Housekeeping yeah. or something. He's <laughs> like, it's really notable. I'm going to teach people how BBC. to decorate who knows? their home. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice guy. Nice guy. Can I... So you were talking about journalists. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a podcast that our friend James showed to me, which I don't think you listened to. I saw the link and I haven't had time to listen, but I will. I will. So it's called Everything is Alive. So if you are into podcasts, check out Everything is Alive. Um, This guy, I think his name is Ian Schling or Schilling or something with an S-C. Um... And uh, he interviews inad- inanimate objects. Hmm. Um, I guess the next episode he's going to be interviewing a lamp post. But the uh, episode I listened to, was, which, which was the pilot episode, uh, the first one, was he interviewed a can of off-brand cola. So what does that entail exactly? The interview? It was really... I don't know. I thought... When I first started listening, it was like, this is kind of interesting, kind of, kind of, uh, you know, kind of fun. It's mm-hmm. a fun episode. Mm-hmm. But then it started to get into like deep existential stuff with this can of off brand cola. And, and with, there with, lies the irony with podcast magic, uh, like, you know how you could play music, you can put like thoughtful music behind anything and you can just start thinking. Um, We're not that fancy, but yeah. some people are. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody if you <laughs> want to listen to it. But it's really cool. <laughs> it was really good. Like, I, I like I like that in 2018, radio is, like, starting to be revived. You know what I mean? Like, That's awesome. Like, there's it this is. art of, like, That's telling a story. That's the pendulum we're talking about. That's the pendulum we're yeah. talking about. Do, 
back in the 40s, people would gather around their radio. They would listen mm-hmm. to this entertainment. It was completely auditory. Right. And it was like, oh, wow, this is a new brand of entertainment. This is so fascinating. We mm-hmm. are coming back to that. And, and when it's I, great. What I thought when I was listening to this, I, I thought to myself, that would be really cool if somebody animated this. But then I thought about it again. My imagination was like drawing a picture for me. I was imagining what this like off-brand cola like looked like <laughs> i was imagining the interviewer and like they're sitting at a desk and i was and like i'm thinking of like sam's club cola and you, know, you like, can like you can like picture thunder you know, i can't remember <laughs> they, they actually had a uh a brand name i was like i can't remember the brand name they used but uh you can like picture their facial expressions or their pauses or you know whatever was going on it was really cool that's awesome you know what else is really cool? Hmm, and I just have to shout out real me. fast. Me. You gonna shout out me? No. You can just tell me. I mean, I love you. And you're, you're Thanks super very much. Cool. Shout out me. All right, what's the next topic? Wow. Whoa. Okay, Ron <laughs> Burgundy. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to my friend Nick from uh-huh. elementary school. Nick, I know you sometimes listen. I don't know if you're going to hear this. But I wanted to say congratulations on your baby. Oh. Beautiful baby. Oh, Aww. my goodness. So cute. So stinking cute. I may or may not have been Instagram stalking your baby pictures. I'm just going to say that right That's now. That's what they're there for. I know. Now, if you were, like, actually Adorable. stalking him, if you were Cutest peeking in his ever. window, <laughs> that would be I'm creepy. All, also, Nick, I've been camping out in I've your been, backyard. Not only have I been um, Instagram stalking you, I have been actually stalking your baby. So, the thing is... I draw is, pictures of your baby. I, like, climb a tree, and I, I sleep there, and I draw pictures of your baby sleeping. I hope that's not weird. I mean, we've known each other since, what, first grade, second grade? I mean, I hope that's not strange to you. Why like, do some people get creepy like that? I don't know. It's so creepy. It's, it's maybe a mental thing. <laughs> that's so creepy. Like, there are some people who, like, turn on the creep. <laughs> they turn on the creep. They turn it up full Speaking blast. Speaking of creep, dude, that SNL skit will forever be my favorite song. Yeah. Like, Andy Samberg, The Creep. If you don't know and you haven't seen it, please look it up. Mm-hmm. Do yourself a favor. It's Is that the, the one with uh, Michael Bolton? No. That's the Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a close second. Um, no, the creep one is Andy Samberg and Nicki Minaj. <laughs> it's just really good. <laughs> the yeah. Lonely Island. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. We should get into some AC and watch it now, actually. Hold up. Okay. Hey. Mm. Um, I need to see if our daughter's awake. Uh-huh. And I also need to maybe grab a beer. Would Again? You, would you like another? Uh... I guess we could take one more parenting pause. Okay, well, let's do it. All right. Go change diapers. Go get your beer on. One more Go parenting refill, pause. guys, real quick. We'll be right back. Jeff from Rome. These songs that we play on the podcast are from him. He is a good buddy of mine. So and uh, check him out, Jeff from Anyways, what were you we gonna say? Well, I was gonna say Jeff is like one of the most unique individuals I have ever met. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about before the break? Wow, we had to shut Jeff down. No, I'm not shutting Jeff down. <laughs> wow. I'm just jealous of his finger picking skills. No, Jeff is like half Persian and half Taos Indian. He's literally probably the only person on the planet. He is the only Jeff. The there only was Jeff. O- there's only one. The only half, you know how half they make Taos those, Indian, half uh, you know how Persian they make, person in the world, yeah. They make those American <laughs> uh, American uh, Jeep spare tire covers where it says there's only one and it has the American flag. There's one, but it's for Jeff too. There's only one. Jeff cannot go back to the Middle East though because he will get drafted mm. into the military. Also... I wanted to shout out Jeff's mom. Okay. What? Yeah, go ahead. There's flies everywhere. Rose Omicron, you are, you are a wonder. She's amazing. Did Somebody's had way there? too many elephants on parade. Well, you know what? These elephants are parading. Handle it. You know? Mm, Denver, Colorado. These elephants are on parade right now. Denver, Colorado. And they are not ashamed. Denver. So, our kids are on the way back, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I know. Okay. Mm. Um, 
Erin Cerna, your mom watched our kids today. She took them to Peter Piper Pizza and the UNM Duck Pond, hmm. which is wonderful. So that's pretty cool. They were really excited to go. Our kids always beg us to go to Peter Piper. It's one of those parent things where you're like, oh, dear God. No. Like, I will buy a gun and shoot myself in the face before I will ever do that for you. I love you, but well, no. Well, I don't know if I'll take that drastic of a measure, but it is awful there. It's terrible. It's like sensory overload. Um, there's TVs that are blaring. There's Screaming arcades, children. which would be cool if you were not with kids. Now you know why they um, serve beer. They do serve beer. It's to keep your, it's to keep the parents. Like, they do serve beer. Subdued. <laughs> yeah. While they go through this parental they, hell. They do have beer there, and they have pizza. Mm. But their pizza has gotten better. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. Chuck E. Cheese has beer too. I know. When I was in college, um, we would go to Chuck E. Cheese like eleven o'clock in the morning and buy pitchers of beer. And play video games because that's not creepy at all. No, there Gr were grown they, men going to check. There were no kids. No, I know that's there were weird. no kids. One time, I got invited to a Mormon slash rebelling Mormon birthday. Uh huh. So I knew some Mormons once. Uh huh. They were very. They were in their rebellion phase. They were so probably they, really nice they, too. They were super cool. They probably had really nice families. I'm sure they did. I never met them. Stereotypes. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they did. I went to their house once to grab some stuff before we went on like a camping trip and I saw a picture of the temple in their house and I was like, oh, this is pleasant. Hmm. Um, but they were rebelling at the time mm -hmm. and one of them decided to have their birthday at Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. And so they bought a bunch of pitchers of beer and I thought it was very funny. Like it was almost ironically funny actually to me that these like rebelling Mormons decided to go to have like beer at their <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese hmm. birthday. Hmm. So, yeah. How interesting life is. One of them actually ended up stealing a credit card and committing credit card fraud. He was super rebellious. That's awful. I know. Actually, it's not, it's not that bad. Mm. I've probably done worse. Yes, it is. It's that bad. You've done worse? Maybe. What the hell does that mean? What do you need to tell me about? <laughs> like one time I killed a guy. <laughs> And we're out. Parenting pause forever. <laughs> yep. So, no, I've not done... I mean, I don't know. What's the worst thing you think you've ever done? Mm. I'm really curious. Hmm. This is my confession. I've gotten really, really drunk. To the point where... Haven't we all? I might have gotten way too drunk. That's not... Okay. Really? That's like the worst thing you think you've ever done? No, but... <laughs> <laughs> so be honest, instead of just like... I'm not going to record it no. because... I don't want to record it because I don't want my kids to know. They're going to know. Mm -hmm. Our kids are going to find out. One of my friends hit a guy with a car. <laughs> He's okay, I think. But we hit his car in the garage for a week anyway. Just... <laughs> I'm so glad you can laugh about this right now. I feel super good about this situation. Why do you keep drinking your beer like that? It's stress drinking. Mm, that's not good. I need to know if I need to call because you might be an accessory to like something bad. That's not good. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, there's bad things. But, I mean, it depends on who you are morally. Yeah. Like where you stand in your walk with Jesus. Um, yeah. I feel bad for Mormons because they're going to hell. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! If you're an evangelical. You need to not. Don't go down that road today. Okay, I won't. But I just. I, I, you know I do. What? Like, yeah. here's the thing. If, you, if you're going to say that and you're going to be kind to people and you're going to love on people. I'm going to love on some Mormons. Then you don't say that. I'm going to love on some Mormons. No, I know. I, I, you, sound like a, you sound like a college student from a liberal arts university right now. A liberal arts university? I yeah. went to Portland State. What do you want from me? <laughs> so touchy. I'm offended. Yeah? You offended by my open carry? So... I do know that Mormons own the Chick-fil-A down the street because Kara's cousin owns it. <laughs> wait a second. Are they franchised? I didn't know that. They are, and Kara's cousin owns the, it, and they're Mormon. The Chick-fil-A in Santa Fe is amazing. I'm just mm. going to say that. You know what sounds really good right now? Hmm. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Chick-fil-A is... Chick-fil-A is quality stuff. 
expensive, and e- even, but it's worth it. Even if their um, employees are scripted, they have plenty of employees. It's always clean in there. Um, there's, a, kn- there's a play place in all of the Chick-fil-A's, but I'm going to say that their Chick-fil-A art is wrong in Albuquerque. Because it's a cow next to a saguaro cactus, we do not have mm-hmm. those here. Mm-hmm. And I want to, I want to, I want to email whoever's in charge of that. You should they probably nicely like say, "Oh, sorry, we'll change it." Yeah, and they play worship music, in- instrumental versions. Can I say something about Chick Fil A? Yes. I feel morally conflicted about Chick Fil A. Why? Okay, as a business, mm-hmm. strictly as a business, I like them. Yes, sir. I'm like, but they hate the gays. Hold on. Is that what you're gonna say? Well, not in those words, but... They don't, though. Hold on. Stop. Can I tell you... I'm not even going down that direction. Oh, okay. 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 Quit. Quit. Quit walking down a path I'm not even meandering down. All right. right. Okay. No. I like them as a business. Their food is good. Their model is good. Their their products have quality. Mm -hmm. Their play places with the kids are very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, And soundproof, which is amazing. And it's reasonably priced. Yeah. I mean, it's a little on the expensive end, but like... For a fast food. Yeah. But if you go to like... Okay. But that's not what I'm saying. Mm Mm-hmm. The the confliction or the conflict, oh, confliction, the conflict comes um, based on that situation a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and I have a hard time like because the evangelicals embraced it. You 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 have a hard time embracing something that because they're a business, and I'm like I can support them as a business, but not as a as a yeah. personal entity that has like moral opinions. I remember because a, they're a business. I remember a certain mega pastor here in town. Who shall rename, remain nameless? Let's just say his initials are S H. He took a selfie inside of the uh, Chick Fil A in the line to show his support. What else? But it's a business. It's not. It's not a person. The internet has ruined us. Mm-hmm. The internet has ruined us. Mm-hmm. I. <laughs> oh man, I'm such a fiend. Can I? Can I I'm say an something? internet fiend. No, can I say something? Yes. I get really frustrated when evangelical people boil down like somebody's homosexuality or sexual orientation mm-hmm. as their only identity. Like our mortgage mm-hmm. guy, he's a gay man. Mm-hmm. He is a freaking amazing mortgage lender. He is so good at his job. Shout out. No, I'm not going to shout out. And I don't like I'm not looking at him and saying, "Oh, because he's gay, I don't know if his mortgages are great." Like I just I'm like, you know, evangelicals, when you do that, you're you're basically like feeding the beast kind of a thing. Like you're perpetuating something that doesn't need to be perpetuated. Yeah. Like you should define people on more than just their sexuality. <clears throat> and seriously. Well, to be fair, our mortgage guy is not confirmed gay, but the pictures in his office could be his brother, but they don't really look alike, so No, it's not his But brother. he's a nice nice man and And he's good at his job. So yes. who cares? I think it's funny. <laughs> Uh, I listen to the Bad Christian Podcast, and they point out these things all the time. We know you time. do. Everyone knows you do. They point these things out all the time. Mm-hmm. And, but no, because they grew up in this stuff, and like I can relate to it, and they're not crazy about it. Like, mm-hmm. um, They were talking about how their parents were, were saying, oh, did you check out this plumber? He's a believer. So, obviously, <laughs> his plumbing skills are like way better. Um, <laughs> because he's kinda, a believer, his, his plumbing skills no, but they are they, they off point the out these like really weird quirks in within Christianity. We're like, have you checked out this guy? He's a believer. But that's where it shouldn't cross. Like, like, let somebody be good at their job and don't define them mm-hmm. by their sexual orientation yeah. based on their job. Twitter has ruined the world. Can I just say, what are you doing? I'm just dreaming. Twitter has ruined the world. So I don't I don't participate in Twitter. I know you don't, and I reason. want to not. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, Wait, I'm gonna. Sh- do I hear something? I thought I heard our kids coming home. No, I don't think so. Wow. Um, Denial. First of all, there I, I I follow a group of people that just run in the same groups, whatever. Like there's the ex evangelical mm-hmm. group hashtag ex ex evangelical. There's the hashtag church too. There's the liturgists following. There's the bad Christian following. There's all these podcasts uh, that are that are stemming from a backlash of what church. I mean, there's a bit like America has a lot of evangelical youth mm-hmm. that grew up listening to really like there's a like terrible in, in, music. No, no. <laughs> 
No, not at all. I'm sorry. No, no. So listen, here's the thing. I was thinking about Newsboys, and I'm yeah, like, Yeah, Newsboys sucks. Yeah. So bad. So bad. So hard. So bad. So hard. Awful. Ah. Uh, bleh. Sorry. DC Talk, I gave them the time that's, of day, but they were good. Much. Um, DC Talk audio adrenaline, to the moment, yeah. audio, audio adrenaline, whatever. Those were those guys were mm-hmm. like late '90s, mm-hmm. but also in the late '90s, into the mid to late '90s, there started to be a revolution of Christian music, mostly caused by talking to you. I, I need to text my mom, but yes, continue. Okay. I am listening. mostly uh, caused by a, a very influential record label called Tooth and Nail Records. I remember they that. stemmed they, they 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 found these bands that were good but they had faith. So there was like I mean it's debatable. Maybe it's not debatable for a lot of people, but for me, I love MXPX. They yeah. were actually good music mm-hmm. uh, to me. It wasn't like what I was used to. It wasn't like Carmen, it wasn't like DC Talk, it wasn't yeah. like Michael W. Smith, it wasn't like Audio Adrenaline. It wasn't like all these other bands. Right. It was something different. It was actual punk rock, Mm -hmm. but these guys had a faith, which I don't think they have faith anymore, which is fine. But Tooth & Nail has has MXPX, they had Blindside, they had P.O.D., they had um, uh, Me Without You, they had all these bands that came out of Tooth & Nail. I love Me Without You. All these bands. Love them. So there was like this like group of Christian people that would go to these festivals Cornerstone Festival, there was a Blue Door Festival, there was a couple of these like quote unquote Christian festivals where these like, oh Pedro the Lion is one of the other bands too. Oh man, um, yeah, Pedro the Lion was like a big deal. Yeah, and he out. was like hardcore Christian. Now, sure. he, now he's not so much. Mm-hmm. Not at all. But, um. <laughs> I really feel like our kids might be. They might be. I keep hearing noise. She'll call you. Are you sure? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Um, but anyway, these groups of people are now in their mid thirties, like us, mm-hmm. maybe even early forties, and they're starting to like be part of the culture that is us right now. Mm-hmm. And things are changing, but they've like swung so far over here, like to to the left or to the right, that it's like, yeah, I grew up evangelical, and yeah, I listened to decent music, but now it's like. It, they're extreme, like the other other direction. Right. They were extreme in the right. Dude, now they're extreme in the left. I have a friend named Ryan, who I went to summer camp with, Camp Wainema. Shout out! They're in the, they're on the Oregon coast. Mm-hmm. And his mom was the director of of Camp Wainema Christian Camp. Mm-hmm. I went with like my friend Amanda McLean and like Mandy Reagan and mm-hmm. like all these people when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And his mom was the director, and he was like super like church boy. Mm-hmm. Now he's like a flat Satanist, like no joke. Whoa. No, I'm serious. Like I'm not. I'm not kidding. Like I'm not even saying that to be facetious or like ironic. Like he literally lives in California, and he is a straight up Satanist. Like mm. it's crazy. But the thing is, he's still a really nice guy. Somebody needs to witness to that man. Well, no, he's had a lot of hurt and a lot of heartache in his life. I know. I was. I yeah, was doing. I, I was were. doing some Christianese. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I can't say that like. I'm not saying it's right, but I can't say that I blame him. Hmm. Given the situations that he's come out of, I can't say that I blame him for where he's at right now. Hmm. You know? Yeah. And I still love him. He's still a cool dude. I love you, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, probably don't listen to this, but I love you anyway. And it's just crazy to think about how things shift. Yeah. You know? I guess if you are in a very tied down sort of culture where it's very restricted that gives you a lot of shame like puts a lot of shame on you well, when you when you're an adult and you kind of open your eyes you become woke you know what he he was raised in a family in Tigard Oregon um and his dad after he graduated from high school came out as gay so i think for him he feels like a the christian church did not embrace um, where he was at or where his dad was at. He felt betrayed because he felt like he'd been lied to his mm-hmm. entire childhood. I mean, there's a lot of things that he probably felt. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speculate because I'm not him. But I feel like being a people, Christian... People do that. Being a Christian mm-hmm. now, today, mm-hmm. right now, instead of speculating things, 
we need to find out like what it is because people's people's situations and people's lives and people's circumstances are so complex sometimes and all we do is generalize and then we categorize yeah that's it yeah we need to stop doing that crap because it's not good for anybody i agree so i'll say one more thing about that as far as people who i admire like their voice um there's a guy who has a podcast and he basically says i don't know about this there's like he he grew up evangelical christian and could probably I hate that word it's even be considered crazy. well we are that well according to people who generalize i mean if we are like we are that like we're not catholic we're not like we're we're that what's going on nothing um we need to bring a salad to group tomorrow. Oh, okay. Better pick a All good right. salad. Anyways. Um, Shut down. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. Really, <laughs> keep going. So, this, this, this guy who has a podcast, he, like, acknowledges that he doesn't know everything. They're here. Oh, okay. Well, anyways... I'm going I'm to skip the... Uh, well, the podcast is called uh, Pastor With No Answers. So check it out. The, he, he interviews people. He acknowledges. And he's kind of... He's super goofy. Mm-hmm. Super... I mean, I don't know. But anyway, like the podcast is good because he, he, he tackles really tough questions. And he acknowledges that he doesn't know everything. He just listens to people, which is great. I love that. So I am going to play our outro music. You guys have a fantastic day. Hopefully me and Lindsay get to have some happy hour tonight. I'm hoping... Um, Happy hour at Five Star Five Burgers. Five Star Burgers, please. Give um, us your happy so our kids are here. All right, we will go. talk to you guys Peace. in the next one. Peace out. Are those Star Wars ships? Star Wars ships. I think. What's this green one? I don't know. What's the red one? I don't know. But they did you have fun at Peter Piper's? Yeah. What'd you do? I got a. I got. I got no candy, but I've got these. I've. Got, I just. Got these and and like. Did you play any video games? Yeah, I play. I played a. I played one. I played a Jurassic Park one, but there wasn't any Jurassic World. There were like these bugs, these spiders. They had to shoot. Hmm. Yeah. It was yeah. Jurassic World or Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park. Hmm. But you had to shoot these big bugs. These little bugs. Oh okay. Were there dinosaurs? Yeah. Did you have to shoot a T-Rex? Yeah.
Was it scary? Yeah, and a brontosaurus, like... Do you remember brontosaurus is not a real dinosaur? Uh, what yeah. It, yeah. It's called it's Well, there's brachiosaurus and there's... What people used to call brontosaurus is called an apatosaurus. There was, like, brachiosaurus grabbing the people and, and thinking they were leaves and eating them. Oh, and no. we had to, like, shoot the thing... And there were like compies, there was Dilophosauruses. There was Dilophosauruses? No, it's called Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus, okay. Hey, do you remember when that when that lady was telling that little boy that um, the Pentaceratops was a Triceratops? But you told her that it was a Triceratops? And she thought that the Albertosaurus was a T Rex. You told her that it was a T it was an Albertosaurus, not a T Rex. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. What? Because they look similar. Oh, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, it just goes back like that. You can sit in the chair. Okay. Hey, look how many beers you've been drinking. <laughs> Who drank all those beers? Who does it? Oh, me and mom both. Hey, do you want to swim with me? Yeah, and here's your left over. Do you want to swim with me? Yeah. Okay. All right, mom will be so surprised when she comes out. All right. You know, let's surprise her by fun balling right in her face. All right, like that sounds like fun. Oh, okay. Let's do that. Go get your swim trunks on. Okay. The waterproof? Yep. Yeah. All right. Hey, say bye to the podcast peeps. Bye to the podcast peeps. Hey, what grade are you going to be in next year? Uh, first grade, and I just want to be rat riders. Huh? Peter Pipees. <laughs> All right. I just said Peter Pipeezers. <laughs> All right. Say bye to everybody. Bye.